Biochar. What is it? A 2,000-year-old practice of converting agricultural waste into a soil conditioner that holds carbon, nutrients, water, and enhances soil fertility. The Portuguese called it terra preta, dark soil. Biochar is created by transforming organic waste with fire. To make charcoal, the combustion process is conducted in the absence of oxygen. A diversity of biomass feedstock can be fed into a pyrolysis unit, a stove that bakes the fuel in a chamber without oxygen. In 2008, Flux Farm Foundation became interested in biochar and applied for a Colorado Department of Agriculture grant for advancing Colorado renewable energy. This grant funded a pilot research study on a farm near Carbondale, Colorado. We work to sustain the lifestyle, livelihood, and ecological future of the West through agricultural innovation. Flux Farm Foundation provides landowners, policymakers, and industry with research-driven information on how to profitably integrate renewable energy and carbon sequestration technologies onto farms and ranches in the Intermountain West, where 130 million acres of pasture reside. Our mission is to understand if, how, and when this kind of isolated land could be managed as an economically sustainable resource in our carbon-constrained future. It's clear to us the answer to if lies in uncovering the answers to how and when. We're learning what the land can produce and pairing that with what the future needs. Flux Farm is not working alone. A number of people are thinking seriously about biochar as a potential solution to many of our problems. Well, I think biochar provides us with a pretty amazing opportunity to store carbon in a, in a stabilized form in the soil, uh, allowing us to uh, improve range condition, uh, improve water retention capabilities in the arid west, and it's a, an extension of a natural process. It's not something that's new to the, our environment. So, it, it, it's pretty sensational stuff if we can figure out a way to, to use it as a tool. There's very little um, practical research being done on biochar applications. And uh, the first reason and impo most important reason is that uh, nobody, no research group, no farmer for sure, has sufficient amounts of biochar available to him or her um, to do these uh, tests. Through building partnerships and securing funding from the Colorado Department of Agriculture, we were fortunate to obtain 15,000 pounds of biochar for research. One of the challenges and unknowns is how to physically apply biochar to the land. How do we put it into the soil? Some chars are a fine dust-like powder that can easily blow in the wind. Other forms of char are coarse granules. Immediately we learned our dreams of using water to pump a slurry into the earth failed. Next we dug trenches and we poured in measured quantities of biochar. So while we don't envision biochar being applied by hand on fields, since we're doing a, a research project and we really have to be precise on how much we will be applying, uh, we have to do it by hand. So I'll be doing a little hand application, just manually shoveling it in out of the bucket that we weighed. Uh, and then wetting it down with some water to, to minimize the dust. So that's what we'll be doing today. In August 2009, we traveled to the North American Biochar Conference. And one of our questions was, how were other people applying biochar to the land? It has been, I guess, a little bit uh, interesting and surprising and also motivating to, to see that not a whole lot of people are really thinking critically uh, about how to apply the biochar to soils. So it's, it's one of those unknown pieces. Uh, we're starting to get a lot more information on how biochar impacts 
various things in the soil, including uh, greenhouse gas emissions from within the soils, um, decomposition rates, characterization rates of different types of chars, which is most certainly important information, but uh, the research that we're doing is, is very relevant given that not a lot of focus has been given to the practical aspects of applying biochar to soils in, in a safe and manageable way that's cost effective. So it gives me hope and a promise that what we're doing is, is good uh, and we're moving in the right direction. Moving in the right direction today means learning how and when. The survival of Western farms and ranches has always been fragile. Weather, the economy, crop and animal disease can change the health of a farm or ranch within a few hours. For agriculture on the Western Slope to remain viable, a new kind of agriculture must emerge with the production of goods and services that sustainably compete in the marketplace today. At Flux Farms, it is our responsibility to learn how much biochar will produce, what kind of benefits, how quickly, and at what cost. To help us measure the effect of biochar on the soil, we partnered with Colorado State University. Crop and soil samples were taken in 2009, and 2010. Soils are complex habitats that support many species of bacteria and fungi. My research is looking at what bacteria and fungi do in the soil to promote plant growth. Biochar is a very porous compound, um, so it actually creates habitats for bacteria to live in. Biochar can affect the ability of the soils to hold water. So it, it can affect the moisture content of the soil, which could impact microbial activity. Um, biochar can also affect soil fertility levels. By 2010, our research showed at 50 tons of biochar per acre, there were the increased levels of microorganisms we were looking for. However, we are also looking for increased crop yields, and they were not there yet. Fluxfarm published our research, a comparison of variable economic costs associated with two proposed biochar application methods, which reported applying biochar is expensive, and significant crop yield increases would need to be experienced to warrant broad acre biochar application. Thus far, our test plots have not yet yielded increased crop production. And given the costs of applying 50 tons of biochar per acre at present, this is not financially realistic. While we understand yield increases may not be experienced for several years following application, this is not yet the time for Flux Farms to recommend the agricultural use of biochar on Western farms and ranches. <music> West is in transition, and the place this is most evident is in our forests. People around here looking at all these dead trees <laughs> and seeing this as an opportunity, we have a feedstock for biochar, and so there's a lot of interest in converting that dead biomass into a form of carbon that we can store rather than having these dead trees slowly decompose and that carbon being transformed as CO2. Given the cost limitations to agricultural biochar use and the still unknown benefits to warrant such costs, in the summer of 2010, Flux Farm began a second area of biochar research using diseased trees as a feedstock for the creation of biochar suitable for high value mine reclamation and heavily degraded landscape restoration. In the fall of 2010, Flux Farm partnered with For the Forest, the White River National Forest, and U.S. Department of Agriculture to test biochar on mine tailings up Castle Creek in the Roaring Fork watershed. 
we did a project up on the on the Hope Mine site, which which was an abandoned mine site where we had mine tailings that essentially were sloughing off into the water supply for aspen. And so we took those tailing piles and we put a cap of biochar and compost at that site over the tailings pile uh, to see if we couldn't improve the vegetation growth over top of that as well as mitigate some of the heavy metals that were associated with those with that waste rock. Mine tailings remain barren, infertile for hundreds of years. So if biochar can benefit soil regeneration and the regrowth of plants in mine tailings, this would be extraordinarily beneficial in stabilizing tailings as well as containing toxic chemicals and minerals pouring out of abandoned mines in the Intermountain West. So what we're looking at is upstream uh, at the Hope Mine in a section that the netting has already been placed and we've got uh, a 35 or 40 degree slope here and, and you can see the vegetation that, that already exists some of these larger bushes and in the rockier areas there are some grasses that are able to survive but largely it's an unvegetated slope and the tailings that we're on uh, are, are tailings from what was then a silver mine so they were searching for silver here all right well what what we have here is we got basically a pile of compost which is going to be used for several purposes uh, one of which is uh, slope stabilization uh, we're going to be mixing biochar in that so it's really going to be kind of the 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 housing mechanism for the biochar and the application mechanism so this will be spread out about three inches across the slope uh, and then somewhere in the order of five to ten percent biochar will be added into the compost Three years of biochar research to date, we, we really have learned a lot. Uh, the use of biochar does improve soil quality in some of the ways that we were looking at, but it's, it's largely cost prohibitive for use at, at large scale for broad acre agriculture. So either significant increases in the productivity of, of, of the soils with biochar will be needed, or, or great reductions in the cost of biochar before it becomes a real economic reality for a lot of the farmers here in the area. Um, but the cost is just too expensive at this point of, of not only the char, but of applying the char uh, to make it really much of an economic reality for, for ranchers in, in western Colorado. So either the cost of the char will need to be decreased significantly or we'll have to find ways to, to actually further enhance the plant growth of, of some of the economic crops that are here through the use of biochar to make make it really um, financially viable moving forward. But what we do know is that it does work. Higher value operations like mine reclamation or, or really degraded land restoration, biochar might actually fit a niche that, that does make economic sense and can compete in the marketplace today. So you know, our, our research moving forward with biochar will really look to better understand some of the opportunities that char might have for reclamation and higher value targets around western Colorado and beyond. So further work is really going to be needed to better understand how biochar positively impacts commercial crops for agriculture. So right now we just, we just can't recommend that farmers start to put in biochar onto their fields for forage production here in western Colorado given the cost constraints that are, that are